It's been a busy 24 hours for the Seattle Mariners front office as they continue to be active early and often during this MLB trade deadline. Last night on Thursday, they acquired Randy Arozarena from the Tampa Bay Rays. The Amazingly Randy. Thank you. Hey. And then today, less than 24 hours later, they continue to upgrade their team. This time in the bullpen, they acquired relief pitcher Jimmy Garcia from the Toronto Blue Jays, as well as shipping off Ryan Stanek to the Mets. And what did the Mariners do tonight in Chicago against the White Sox to thank the front office for going out and making these moves? Well, they put up 10 runs against the White Sox. They shut them out. George Kirby pitched yet another gem. They also went back to back to back with home runs. Josh Rojas, Dylan Moore, and Victor Robles. And this is before Randy and before Jimmy had have reported to the team. Now, starting off with the trade of Jimmy Garcia, which happened earlier today, they sent to the Blue Jays outfield prospect, Jonathan Class A, as well as catching prospect, Jacob Sharp. This definitely was an overpay by the Mariners to go acquire Jimmy Garcia. Jonathan Class A was the Mariners' number 10 overall prospect. He has a 70 to 80 grade speed tool. Last year in 129 games in the minor leagues, he hit 20 home runs with 79 stolen bases and 802 OPS. So far this year in AAA Tacoma, when he wasn't playing for the Mariners, he had 10 home runs and 26 stolen bases a 274 batting average and an 856 OPS. He did debut for the Mariners this year and in his limited time in the major leagues, 19 games, 43 plate appearances, he did have a 195 batting average and a 452 OPS. But the Mariners are giving up Jonathan Class A, one of their top prospects with six years of club control to the Blue Jays to acquire a high leverage bullpen arm from the Blue Jays, which the Mariners are desperately needing. And a lot of teams are seeking the same thing at the moment. The other prospects sent along with Jonathan Class A is Jacob Sharp. He is currently in low A Modesto. He is a 22 year old catcher and he is not in the top 30 for the Mariners prospects. Now, first off, who is Jimmy Garcia? Jimmy Garcia is a 33 year old right handed relief pitcher who was formerly with the Toronto Blue Jays. He is not qualified in innings, but you look at his baseball savant page. He has an expected ERA of 2.27, an expected batting average against of 169. He has one of the highest strikeout rates in all of the league at 36.5% of the batters that he faces. He's striking out. He's also getting a 34.6% chase rate and a 30.3% whiff rate. Jimmy Garcia on the year for the Blue Jays has 30 innings pitched, a 0.8 whip, a 12.6 strikeouts per nine, and a 2.4 walks per nine. His pitch arsenal is a four seam fastball that he throws 33% of the time, which averages 97 miles per hour and gets up to above 100 miles per hour at times. His four seam fastball has a 114 batting average against and a 123 expected batting average. His main secondary is a curveball, which he throws 20.7% of the time. That averages 84 miles per hour. He then throws a sinker 19.6% of the time, a sweeper 14.6%, a changeup 8.9%, and a slider 3.3%. He's not your typical relief pitcher with two to three pitches. He's got five pitches that he can go to. He's in the final year of his contract, so he will become a free agent after this season, and he's due about $2 million the remainder of this season. Also something to look out for is that Jimmy Garcia was on the injured list for about a month early in the year from June 16th up to about July 19th with right elbow inflammation. And he has only made two appearances since returning from the injured list. The other big move today was that the Mariners sent struggling relief pitcher Ryan Stanek to the New York Mets in exchange for the Mets number 30 overall prospect, outfielder Ryland Thomas. Thomas for the Mets so far this year in the minor leagues had a 265 batting average, a 318 on-base percentage, 387 slug, which is a 705 OPS, and 74 games between AAA Syracuse and AA Binghampton. Stanek had been struggling mightily, especially recently for the Mariners. In July, he had a 7.94 ERA over eight games pitched, five and two thirds innings. He gave up five earned runs, two home runs, including six walks and eight strikeouts over those five and two thirds innings. In the month of July, he had a 1.941 whip. In total on the year, he had a 4.38 ERA, a 1.333 whip, a 10.2 strikeouts per nine and a 3.9 walks per nine. Now this is an interesting move because Ryan Stanek was the setup guy for Andres Munoz in the late inning for the Mariners. And before Gregory Santos came back from the injured list, they were really needing more leverage guys at the back end of the bullpen. And by adding Jimmy Garcia, getting rid of Ryan Stanek, the Mariners probably are going to have to go out and acquire another high leverage arm. There is some positive news with Gregory Santos. He was removed from his last outing with a sharp pain in his right knee. He is with the team in Chicago and he had an MRI on his knee, which came back okay. 
per Scott's service. And Santos was testing out his knee pregame today with the trainers, and apparently he could be available to pitch tomorrow, which is very positive news. I definitely like seeing how aggressive the Mariners are being right now with the trade of Randy Rosarena, getting that out of the way, really the first big move of this trade deadline, as well as going out and overpaying a little bit for Jimmy Garcia to reinforce their bullpen. The Mariners still have work to do. They still need to add to their offense. I've been hearing quite a bit of rumors about quite a few different names. Vlad Guerrero Jr. I think is still in the mix. Yandy Diaz is another one from the Rays at first base. I haven't heard too much Isak Paredes recently with the Rays, but then Jonathan India with the Reds is still an option at second base if they're looking to upgrade there. But with this trade last night for Randy Rosarena, that will likely take them out of the market for Luis Robert Jr. They're pretty set in the outfield now. And the biggest need is definitely in the infield, specifically mainly at first base. So overall in the past two days, some solid moves by the Mariners to bolster their roster and get things moving in the right direction. Make sure to stay locked in to Ryan Divish and Jeff Passan on Twitter, and make sure to like and subscribe to the Couch GM to stay up to date on all things MLB trade deadline. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below on these moves that the Mariners have made so far, as well as who you think the Mariners should go out and get to bolster the rest of their roster. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.